Joining us is News Corp columnist Angela Mollard. Angela, great to be with you. Let's start with the Olympics. It's always an exciting time for us to rally around our athletes, but it really got off to an uncomfortable start. Mm -hmm. What did you make of the opening ceremony? Look, it was a mess. It went for too long. It was so woke. It was out. And you, every time you looked at it, something different was happening. There mm. were minions. There was a menage a trois. There was a repurposing of the Last Supper, supper with um, transvestites. It just felt like they were trying to do too much and to, and to nod to too much about... Uh, I mean, look, it's always about French history and it's always about the country's culture and that sort of thing. But it just felt like it didn't have a story in the way that Sydney or London Absolutely. had a beautiful flowing story that, you know, you could grab it. You found yourself looking at it thinking, what's the reference point here? Too clever by half. I mean, this is the country that is at the forefront of art and culture. Could have done better. 100% agree. And then modern Christianity, I just don't think it went down well. Not at all. And look, if you had attacked Islam like that, I can understand why Christians are really upset about Absolutely. it. Look, you know, the whole Jesus thing about turning the other cheek. Yeah, but that's a passive reaction. This was this hurt a belief system mm -hmm. of, of people, and I just don't think you do that. You couldn't nod to um, the culture of transvestites and of diversity without having to situate it, the parody, within The Last Supper. Absolutely. Well said. Let's talk about some of the other issues that Paris is dealing with as it hosts <laughs> this Olympics. There are concerns over the water, uh, the water quality in the scene as a, a men's race had to be postponed because mm, of it. Is that right? That's right. The triathlon. So, of course, they're going to do the swimming element in the Seine. They've had terrible weather, so all the dog poo that is all over the streets of France. And this is the thing. No, Everyone no. thinks France is elegant and gorgeous, this beautiful country with the, where the women are the coolest in the world and they have the loveliest food, but actually it's a pigsty. It's disgusting. I've been, the last time I was there, you just spend your whole time. It's not Emily in Paris. You are not just toppling around <laughs> on your shoes. You are actually trying to navigate the way through the dog poo. So, look, to even think that they spent these... I think it was more than a billion dollars on trying to clean, clean up the river. My goodness. And most city rivers are a pigsty. It's just... You, you know, swim in a pool or find, find an ocean and whatever, just situate it somewhere oh, else. It's not going to work. Yeah, and some of the, the images that I'm seeing of the amount of crowds and they haven't got the security checkpoints organised, that people don't know where they're going, and mm. it just seems like absolute chaos. It's going to make Brisbane look really good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Australia needs a win sometimes, yeah. so we'll be good for Brisbane. But as you mentioned, uh, it's, you know, Paris and France, it's known for its food, but unfortunately for the athletes, <laughs> they're not getting the best food or the food that they might need to perform their best. They've been stuck with vegan menus. That's right. About 60% of the menu at the Athletes' Village is apparently vegan. Now, that's fine if you're having a convention of astrologers and palm readers, but this is the Olympics. Oh they need a hunk of steak. What surprises me about this is, Again, it's really woke. What this is the country that brought to us beef bourguignon and you know fillet steak and um, boulebas, you know all these lovely protein-rich dishes. You'd think they'd want to showcase them, wouldn't you? But instead, they're being fed these lentil patties and things, which is not going to get you to the um, to, to the world record. So that may be some of the reasons why we're not seeing those numbers in the pool that we were expecting, oh because goodness. they're just existing on veggies. No, it's not okay. <laughs> I'll. Uh... Yeah, I can't imagine being an athlete and then you're getting stuck with that. There are reports that that, um, that there were warnings about that that would be the menu, but look, it's certainly not ideal. Mm -hmm. Staying on the Olympics, uh, a royal has been spotted there, one that Australia likes to claim, Mary. <laughs> well, lots of royals there, but I love the fact that Princess Mar Mary, our, you know, our royal, she was wearing red and white, so mm -hmm. she was supporting Denmark, but as plenty have said, she, you know, runs green and gold in her veins. I thought this was really lovely. Obviously, the Olympics is really, really important to Mary. It's where she met her husband, Fred, in Sydney in 2000. And I think the fact she went into the Athletes' Village, spoke to them, Anna Mears, obviously, was um, quite nervous, she said. Uh, obviously, a former Olympian talked about the fact that she was really nervous, but she was bold enough to invite uh, Princess Mary back to the athletes' visit village if he, she wanted a decent cup of coffee. Amazing. So there's, there's always this, you know, does Italy, does France, who has the best coffee? Or anyone who's travelled in Europe knows Australia has the best coffee. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing you want when you get <laughs> off the plane, isn't it?